reasons for them not to grow. Do par na nga runner ako sa hurdle nga run, di ba sa mga mga ano tawag, sa marathon when you when we when, when there are hurdles, ang 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 runner ma-jump siya anay sa isa ka hurdle. And then pag nalagpasan niya another hurdle naman. It's it's like giving hurdles to microorganisms for them to prevent their growth. So you use various types of these factors. You use the you use pH, you use water, you use temperature. You use you probably um, put in nutrients that are not for their use. For example, if lipophilic ang bacteria, fat loving siya, you devoid the food with fat. So wala siya fat loving bacteria. But then there are other microorganisms that can grow as well. So no, it's an interplay of these factors for microorganisms to grow. So that's the complex complexity of spoilage. Concentration of gases in the environment. If we are in this room and it's totally sealed, and then little by little, oxygen is being pulled out, what happens to us? Amat amat, makita nga ma. Similar to microorganisms, now there are microorganisms that thrive on very high oxygen levels. There are microorganisms that thrive on very low oxygen levels. And there are microorganisms who does not need oxygen to grow. So various microorganisms require those. So when they need oxygen to grow, they are called aerobic microorganisms. There are microaerobic, and when they do not need oxygen to grow, they are anaerobic. In instances, for example, in your canned products, di ba canned products nyo, totally sealed siya, devoid of oxygen. Once ma-open mo siya, it easily spoils. Pero once inside the can, it takes how many years? A can product usually, how long a shelf life? Two years? Yes. One year, two years, some three years, depending on the type of product inside. No? And depending on um, other components no? that can inhibit microbial growth. But because of the absence of oxygen, a lot of microorganisms cannot grow there. But take note, it can still spoil if an anaerobic microorganism is present inside because it does not need oxygen to grow. So there you go, you have anaerobic or facultative anaerobic spore formers, most likely to grow in tan products, microaerophilic, grow in vacuum foods, aerobic bacteria usually grow on the surface of meat or any raw product, or aerobic molds which, which will grow if insufficiently on insufficiently dried or salted products. There are also what you call um, salt-loving microorganisms, halophilic. They love salty food. So imagine any type of food that you have means it can spoil because there are a lot of microorganisms that have different types of characteristics that can spoil your product given the right conditions. Okay, canned man siya, fresh man siya. Kung canned kati, may anaerobic bacteria. Ay, anaerobic microorganism. Kung fresh siya, may aerobic man. Kung low acid siya, may microorganisms man that can grow on low acid. So meaning to say, almost all food commodities, or all, com all commodities of food, even water, can spoil because there are a lot of microorganisms depending on conditions for growth that can spoil your product. Okay? Relative humidity. What do you mean by relative humidity? Sa ilonggo. Paang. Amount of what? Moisture in the in the air. And remember, moisture is loved by microorganisms. Most microorganisms would love presence of water. Of course, my humans gani needs water. They need water as well. So meaning to say, the higher the relative humidity in the air for aerobic microorganisms, the higher the chance for growth. And relative humidity affects food product as well. So foods with low water activity, 
meaning to say very dry food products kay very low ang water activity when placed at high humidity environment take up water increase their water activity and get spoiled easily when you open a coffee packet uh, a packet of coffee ma coffee is a dry product very low water activity if you expose it in an environment with with very high relative humidity it easily takes up the moisture from the air and your coffee powder easily gets spoiled. Milk powder as well. Permit po siya ginabuksan. It will take up water from the atmosphere. And easily spoils. Okay? Or dry grains. Sino ang may mga, may mga uh, warehouses of uh, sacks of rice here. Pati sa mga shenda. Shendero damo ang kalupaan nga ginauma. So may ara ka mo, tawag nila na sa una kamarin. I don't know if you're familiar with the term. Parang warehouse of uh, of sack rice, sacks of rice. What we don't like is for sacks of rice to be stored in an environment that is very humid because dry na siya, dried na, nabulad na ang palay. Insulod mo siya sa sako, ang sack of rice insulod mo siya sa isa ka room with very high paang-paang, very high humidity. What happens is that you nagakulas ang in mga palay and nagagrow siya molds. Because very high ang ang relative humidity, paang-paang. Typical of tropical countries. Okay. So those are factors affecting spoilage. So mahambal na lang kita ti ano na lang ini obrahon ta kay tanan gali nga food pwede mag-spoil hindi na lang na magkaon. Panugon sang bihon. Okay, so we have learned, at this point, we have learned the different causes of spoilage. Which is? Sige, be. Kung nagapamati ka mo. Causes of, causes of spoilage. Insects, yes. Enzymes and? Factors affecting spoilage. There are a lot. Okay, I'm gonna answer. Temperature, humidity, pH, moisture content or water activity, nutrients. Okay, matagutan ni quiz kasi kina answer na kamo siya. Libre na lang. Okay, so because a lot of food products, especially raw materials or fresh produce, not yet processed, are exposed to different types of, of spoilage or exposed to factors that can initiate spoilage. What are we going to do? Hmm? Preserve. We need to preserve food. If, if you try to imagine, wala food preservation, wala food processing, all fresh produce, fresh products. Di ba nami ang fresh? Fresh vegetables, fresh fruits. What happens? Dali mas spoil. What else? It affects world economy. Why? Because milk from New Zealand cannot be exported to the Philippines without food preservation, without food processing. Or our durian, for example, or fresh mangoes from the Americas cannot go to the United States or to Japan to be exported because we do not have food preservation. So we need food preserva preservation because to prolong shelf life of food. What else? To prolong shelf life and therefore. Avoids food spoilage, yes. Food security, yes. Imagine if we do not have food preservation or food processing and seasonal ang food. During some time, nga wala na planting of rice, wala na harvest of rice. Pag naubos ang rice ta, di ba may may period nga um, no harvest, no, wala third dropping, for example. May famine. So we preserve food in order to extend its shelf life so that we can eat it even if it's not it's in its season. 
for example. We dry mangoes so that Europeans can have a taste of mangoes even if they are dry. Dry product. Manga siya yung yapo. Manga siya, dried lang siya. At least nakakaon sila manga nga dried. Or because of technology, because of other types of high levels of technology used to preserve fresh produce, your fresh mango can now go to Europe. And Europeans can now have a taste of the very sweet Gimaras mangoes. Or the durian, for example. Diba? Or kiwi fruit coming from Japan or New Zealand can go to the Philippines and be tasted by Filipinos. So, hindi na tao ang nag travel to eat food. The food travels to be eaten by humans. Diba? So, food preservation, if you think about it, has changed the world economy. Especially now that the even, even developing countries, countries have opened its doors to free trade. But well, of course, if you are uh, more on the political side, you would have, it would have um, disadvantages. But it would have advantages for very, even microprocessors or huge food companies. Okay, so we go to food preservation. Because I have heard that there are Gimars people who will be here, I specifically have mangoes as an example. Fine press, again. So imagine a fresh mango can be turned into different types of food products. You have juice, you have dried mangoes, very popular. You have fruit leather. Have you experienced eating one? Fruit leather, not very familiar, not really a very uh, popular product in the Philippines, but in other, in Western countries where they lack tropical um, fruit or medyo expensive on tropical fruit, very popular sa ila ang, ang fruit leathers. There are already even meat leathers or meat and fruit na leather combined. Achara, or fermented product coming from mangoes. Mango jam. So you have a lot of different types of products coming from one commodity, which is fresh mango. Okay. So imagine the wonders of food preservation. Okay. With rice, you can think of a lot of things. You already have canned rice, right? canned rice. Ako wala man. But Diliman, UP Diliman is producing canned rice as really good. I think na commercialized na nila. And, that, and I think na use na during, I don't know which Baguio, either Yolanda or the more recent ones. But na -com on a commercial scale na sila. Ang ilang uh, canned rice. Siyempre, who wants to, di ba, ang usually nga relief food is bugas lang gitya. And kung nag-evacuate ka, wala ka man kalan nga dala. Wala ka paggas. Basa ang mga, mga kahol. So it's very easy. You just need, well, probably they should have can openers along with the donation of the canned rice. But rice alone can be produced into different types of products. You can get, you can produce cereals from rice. What else? Rice wine. Rice coffee. What else? Flour, yes. So you can produce a lot of different types of products from just one commodity. And imagine the uses and the preference of consumers. So there you go, what is food preservation? It's a process through which physical and or chemical agents are used to prevent microbial spoilage of food. Nakaspecify din siya microbial din. Because dati, when we talk about food preservation, the old concept is just to transform a raw material into something different. But on the on a scientific note, food preservation is actually created in order to combat microbial spoilage. Prevent it, inhibit it, depending. Depending on the type of technology that you use. Food preservation aims at treating food in a manner to prolong its storage life. By preventing or inhibiting growth of microorganisms, you inhibit spoilage and therefore you prolong the shelf life of your food product. If milk can, fresh milk can last a day or two at cold temperatures or at cool temperatures, it can last two years 
if it's sterilized and put in a pouch product, in a, in a packaging material, and it can be transported to other countries. In food preservation, efforts are made to destroy organisms in the food or increase the period taken by microorganisms to adapt to the food environment before they start to spoil the food. Na prolong mo ang iya time, ang, 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 ang chance niya to grow. Ara lang siya da, sa imo food product, and you use food preservation in order to prevent your microorganisms to multiply. Because once they multiply rapidly, then they begin, your food begins to spoil. They cause food spoilage. But even if it's present, if it is not, does not multiply, it will inhibit, it will slow down the spoilage of your food product. Why is it important? We already talked about this. Increase the shelf life of food as well as its supply. Although the freshness, palatability, and nutritive value may be altered with time delay, perishable foods can be preserved to prevent spoilage and made to be available throughout the year. So it helps increase variety in our diet and makes it better balanced. So it creates variety. Kung wala preservation and wala food processing, all fresh, so ang makaon mo lang gidya kung when we talk about mangoes, it's just fresh mangoes. Day in and day out. But when we talk about food preservation, you have dried mangoes, you have achara, you have different types. You can choose. Mag -mag gusto magkaon mangga, ano nga mangga? Dried mangoes. So you have different types of food commodities available to you. To save food for future use at the time of scarcity or drought. With food, even if without harvest, we can, with food preservation, we can eat certain types of food. Preservation of food also minimizes the preparation time and energy at home. Imagine if every time na lang nakaunan ta fresh commodity. So kung fresh commodity siya, balatan mo pa siya, slice mo pa siya, lutuon mo pa siya, i-cook mo pa siya. Pero pag na-process na siya or na-preserve na siya, buksan mo na lang pakete, okay na. Imagine if you want to uh, drink or if you want to make a beverage out of rice, for example. So, mabakal ka pa fresh nga, um, mabakal ka pa bugas? Ano mo pa siya? San Lagoon? I-brew mo pa siya? Asa nga mahimo siya nga ko rice coffee? But, if there's food preservation or food processing, you can just buy one packet of rice coffee in the grocery store. Kapuli mo sa balay, utama mo na lang ininit. Okay ka na. To stabilize the price of food throughout the year, since seasonal food can be preserved and made available for consumption throughout the year. No notice nyo, for those food that are seasonal, pag season siya, very cheap. Diba? Notice nyo if it's season for tomatoes, hala, nag-aalalawas naman ito siya sa super. Diba? Binalapakan na lang ganyan. Ibaan sang salakyan. Okay, wala na may nagabakal because ka, ka ano siya? karton ka uh, kain kain sa dito tapos tagpila na lang ang kilo pulo 10 pesos per kilo padahog na lang Alas, may aman ka pa ang aman mo isang ng kilo but notice nyo pag hindi na season sa tomatoes ay abaw pag bakal ah, sige okay na lang hindi na lang kumagot ang kamatis pwede man lima ka mga pisos is ah dua kabilog isa kabilog so, when we have food processing and we have food preservation, we decrease the, 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 ano, the occurrence of fluctuations in prices of seasonal products. Because, in terms of tomatoes, pag hindi season sang, sang tomato, what do you buy? Mas cheaper mag-buy sa tomato sauce. Pag kilanlan mo sa, hindi mo na siya kilanlan, di ba? And ang work, it is entailed to produce a, uh, a, uh, tomato sauce out of fresh tomatoes which of course must much better ang taste no of course may mga sacrifices in terms of flavor in terms of nutritive value but it becomes available and at a low, lower cost if the food commodity is seasonal okay let's take a look at what happened in the past how did food preservation came about are you interested to know what did our ancestors do Nga anag may food processing ta subong? Yes. Okay. Di pa kamo na tuyo? <laughs> di pa, di pa. Sige. Okay. 
Let's see what did the Egyptians do. So most of the preservation used in Egypt focused on grains and cereals. Because of course, we know grains and cereals are staple foods. Rice, for example, in the Philippines, wheat in Western countries, rye and barley, sometimes in African countries. So mostly, it started there, grains and cereals, because these are staple foods. Adlaw, adlaw siya ginakaon. Methods used were primarily storage and drying. So ang pagbulad sa uga, ang pagbulad sa palay, it started way, way, way back. And those are the first concepts of food preservation. Storing it, or drying it, and then storing it. And what is being prevented? Ano nga factor ang gini-inhibit niya when nag-dry sila sa cereal? Water. It lowered water activity, which is available, or moisture content available to microorganisms. Wala pa na nila nothing, but probably they have observed Now, when they dry greens or cereals and, they're, and then store it, it can be consumed after such a long time. Beer was common staple of the Egyptian diet. So boys, na-wish mo na lang ang Egyptian ka sa una. <laughs> or probably descendants mo Egyptian kung pala inom ka sa buk. <laughs> beer was a common staple. Yes, evidence of beer dates back to 4,000 BC. And do not think of the beer that is on the bottle, amber-colored bottle with the San Miguel uh, logo. Think more of the concept of tuba. Mm. That must be the concept of Egyptians way back then. They ferment cereals in order to produce beer. Okay. Breweries and bakeries were complex structures, and wine was produced as well, but only for the elite. Remember, wine is mostly coming from barley, malt, and mas complex ang, firm, ang, ang process niya of food preservation. Fish and meats were also preserved by drying and some salting. First area to demonstrate the use of sweeteners such as honey in their diets and foods. So as early as the Egyptian civilization, Medyo complex ng ilaw means of food preservation. May sweeteners na sila, may drying and salting na sila. Later on, we will know why salting is a type of food preservation, the addition of salt. Okay. Mesopotamian preservation. Doon nag-world history ka lang sinay. Sige. Earliest winemaking evidence dating back to 6,000 BC and first evidence of ovens Tanur, they called their ovens tanur. Actually, amo na siya ang itsura niya. So, ara siya sa, sa ground. Ara siya sa, sa earth. Nag-create sila sa oven-like structure. So, it's beehive shape stood upright, made out of clay and gypsum. It can withstand temperatures of about 850 degrees Celsius. Very, very hot. Used to cook grains and breads. Fish was commonly dried, smoked, and pressed for oils. And early beer and wine added important proteins and nutrients to the diet since the beverages were very low in alcoholic content during that time. Today, you can have uh, alcoholic beverages with 45%. Diba? Other early methods of preservation, you have Pompeii jars, which they have jars of fruit preserved in honey. Probably because wala pa na nag-get ang concept sang, sang sugar. Remember, um, ma ang mga galleons before, they travel, or ang mga Europeans nga nag-initiate sang, sang travel, Magellan, for example, the travel of Magellan from uh, Spain, or is it Spain, Portugal, in search for what? Spices. spices. It's not in search for land to conquer, but in search for spices. In early times, no, there are actually expeditions to search for sugar cane as a source of sweetener. Kay sila ya, nakita mo honey yung ila. So di ba ang use naton for jam usually sugar from sugar cane. But since ang ila available na sweetener is honey, so ang ginagamit nila nga pang preserve for, for, for fruit is honey. Vikings laid fish in the riggings of their ships to let sea wind dry their fish. Diba ang sea wind, if you are you, you live near the sea, salty. Salty ang sea wind. So, ang 
siguro wala pa sila concept sa pag-asin mismo or paghibo mismo sa salt. So what they do is ginahalay nila ang fish na ginakot nila. So kung maagsikan siya sa water or seaweed, ma-expose siya sa seaweed, it's more or less salted as well. But not so much. So they keep food that way. Early North American Indians naman, they have pemmican. That's the pemmican there, the bottom of the picture. They first remove fat from the meat, then cook the meat, then grind the fat and meat together to form into a paste. This prevented the deterioration of the meat. And, and it's very important for fur traders during 17th, 18th, 19th century. Balon nila. Because fur traders, nagago sila from one place to another to trade fur. So because they are nomads, they cannot grow their own food. Like agriculture. So what they do, gabalon sila food. Mostly meat product. And in order for the meat to last longer, they make it into pemmican. Ang halimbawa na sina daw, ginamos. The ginamos. Nag-ferment siya. New stoneware developed during the 16th century and could stand high temperatures of 1200 to 1400 degrees Celsius. Hindi ko kabalo kung ano na lang yung ginakaon ito. The uling na niguro kay very, very hot. During the 17th and 18th centuries, new ingredients were being created. Imported spices and sugars increased the variety of foods. Because of the trading and because of the expeditions um, created by Europeans, no? Europeans brought back spices and sugar, which created more different types of food products. In 18th century, created a shift in food preservation from a necessity for survival to a desire for delicacies. So, sang una, they need to prolong life of the food product or the raw material because they need to survive. For traders, example niya. Because they cannot grow their own food and harvest it, ginapreserve nila ang meat by making it into a ginamos style. That's for survival. They need food. But later on, because of the presence of spices and sweeteners, it's not, it's not already uh, an issue on survival. It's already what? Desire for delicacies na. Naging maarte na ang tao. Gusto magkaon tinapay kay nagutom ko. Pero gusto ko kaunon Auntie Anne's ng Gidya. So siya siya. Gusto mo tinapay kay nagutom ka. Pero Auntie Anne's lang makasu makasupay sa inyo. So it's not just anymore filling in your hunger, but you prefer something else. You prefer the delict. To, naging ano na siya? Naging bisyo na siya, kumbaga. Okay. But in 1735, botulism was first recognized from sausage. This is actually in Italy, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Botulism. May nag-occur nga, nga food illness. Food preservation methods used were not effective enough for long-term use. Because wala nila na perfect, they did not see the science behind it. They just observed nga, they dry, it can be it can be prevented spoil longer. So they did not see the science behind drying the food. And because of that, wala nila na perfect ang technology. And because of that, the more occurrence na of food, food spoilage and food illness. But so because the food preservation methods were not effective enough, better methods were needed for safer food consumption. And this switch from primitive methods used to flavor foods to newer scientific techniques. What else? What affected the, 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 the growth of food preservation techniques? The rise in population. Because you have greater number of people to feed, you need to process food in order to feed larger amounts of Agricultural machinery improving, fertilizers develop. So, may mga machineries na for agriculture which speed up the harvest process. So, imagine kung wala ka food preservation and may na speed up mo ang harvest process, damo damo ka na harvest na food. And if you will not preserve it, it will just oil spoil. So, food wastage. In America, no commercial food preservation yet. But during and after the Civil War, United States was producing 500 tons of preserved foods per year. 
So microbial ang cause they found that it's microbial in nature that causes deterioration and disease in food products. And it was during this time that food technology was being seen in a more scientific way. So we we'll just run through this because you might be uh, might come hungry. Okay. The role of spallanzani. If you can still remember um, in your high school years, ano ang role ni spallanzani? Sang time nila, no, there were some, a certain uh, scientists that say that what? Living things can grow from dead things. Uh, the, the theory of spontaneous generation was very, very common during that time, if you can still remember. And it was Palyansani who did certain experiments to disprove that. And because of his experiments, actually the, the experiments of Spallanzani, I will not go through that in detail, the experiments of Spallanzani and the role of Appert gave rise to commercial sterilization, which is the technology being used to produce canned products, specifically meat products. Si Appert, actually ang apelido ni ang Appert, dira naghalin ang word ni Appertization, or commercial sterilization. Another term for commercial sterilization is apertization. Dira na naghalin kay Appert. Sang time ni Appert, there is a Sang time ni Appert, there is a uh, French ni siya. Um there is a war in France, no? And the soldiers are dying not because of bullets but because they die during the winter months. Hindi maglast ang ila food. So, during the time, um, one of the leaders in that country no, gave a contest to whoever can formulate the, the extension of the life of meat products for soldiers. And may price money siya. And ang nakadaog siyang price money is si Appert because of his apertization process wherein ginboil niya ang meat in a totally sealed nga, nga bottle. Before, ang ginubra nila ya, before ang mga previous nga experiments, what they did was they cork the the bottle. You're familiar with the usual nga cork. cork din cork na nila ang bottle and then din boil. And then may nag, nag-spoil man na yung nagtubo ya pun. May nagtubo nga maggots. That's why kinkonclude nila nga living things can come from dead things. But little did they know na contaminated to ang meat product. Because air, kung may itlog na dito sang, sang mga insects, sa meat na daan, air can come in through the cork because it's porous. But what Appert did was, ginbutangan niya sang dog glue and totally airtight ang bottle. And it prevented the spoilage of meat for several months, which won him the price, uh, pinaka francs. Okay? So there, dira naghalin ang apertization process or sterilization process or commercial sterilization process which is the, the technology behind canned products. So Salian Pine continuous evolution evidence dating back to 20 years ago. So hindi lang ni new ang preservation techniques. Ang preservation methods na ginagamit na subong, most of them dates back to 20,000 years ago. Drastic improvements though only happening in the last 200 years. Because of industrial revolution, my, my machines na you you do preservation faster. Science during this period heavily influenced preservation and the food industry. So overall effect, if we are talking about canning or food preservation, it lessened nomadic travels. Wala na nomads going from one place to another in search for food. It established communities and civilizations. Why? Because people can now stay in one place grow their own food, do preservation techniques in order for food to last over the year, even if it's not on season. And so, it encourages the growth of civilization. Kaya hindi na siya mag-move from one place to another. Maka-build sila structures. Maka-build sila organizations, which we will learn later on sa baking naman, the history of baking. Increasing populations, because of food preservation, food is available, there is lesser scarcity, it improves, what? it encourages multiplication of human beings, Mandy. 
help eliminate foodborne disease, and supplies could last throughout the season, extending life expectancies. Okay? So before, ang milk, bot ang milk only lasts pilaka days. But now, it can last a year, even two years, depending on the technology being used. Okay? So that's the preservation today. Many domestic processes, canning, freezing. You know that you can do canning at home. Um, many American families do canning of food at home. They are silang uh, pressure cooker. They use pressure cooker to can food products. But of course, kung um, hindi nami ang mga canning process, you get botulism. In the Philippines, why do canning at home when you can buy can from canned food from uh, groceries? Mabakal ka pa sa equipment, mga bunday ka pa. Mapiliti ka lang sa jeep kag mabaka sa supermarket, di ba? Okay. Freezing, which is most often we do with a lot of our food commodities. Freezing. My Lola would say, freezing is the ultimate um, solution to food spoilage. Si Lola, kuya, basta sa freezer na siya, hindi gina siya mag-spoil. <laughs> so, ang amon sudan, nag last siya two months. Three months. Tapos, ang tiga niya daw, kabato na siya at but we know that even in freezer, food can spoil. Food can spoil. Maybe longer periods of time now. Blanching. You're familiar with this method? Anong blanching sa ilongbo? Lapwa. You pour boiling water or you immerse it in boiling water for minutes, seconds or minutes. To small. It has its own uh, a unique um, qualities nga gina-impart sa food. Preserving with the use of sugars. We Filipinos love sweet products. So we are very much familiar with jams, jellies, preserves, marmalades, and butters. Oven or sun drying. So we go into principles of food preservation. You want to have a five-minute break before we go into this? Sige, let's have a five-minute break. Okay. A week now. Labi nagig karon ang holy hour sa hapon siya. Di ko kabalo kung ma dance number ko para hindi ka mamatay yung. Anyway, so we go now to principles of food preservation. So first, if you if you are you can still remember the outline. Number one on the list is prevention or delay of the growth of microorganisms. Because gani, microorganisms are the most dangerous ones. So one of the, of the principles of food preservation is to prevent the delay of the growth of microorganisms. In some cases, we want them to be killed. Diba? But if we cannot kill them, more or less, let's inhibit their growth. Okay? Because killing them would entail uh, more expensive technologies, for example. But preventing, there are cheaper ways to prevent or inhibit their, their growth. So, you avoid invasion of microorganisms by aseptic techniques. If you are working in the lab, uh, most of you who are working in laboratories are familiar with aseptic techniques. Removing microorganisms by filtration, inhibiting the growth and activity of microorganisms through freezing, refrigeration, drying, anaerobic conditions, chemicals, or antibiotics, which we learned earlier are the factors affecting their growth. And, there you go, killing microorganisms via heat or irradiation, which we will tackle later on. Another principle of food preservation is to prevent or delay self-decomposition. Well, we mentioned that it's one of the types of spoilage, self-decomposition through enzymes or chemicals. And we want to prevent or delay that. So it's either we destruct or inactivate inherent enzymes. How do we do that? One of the ways to inactivate enzymes is through blanching. blanching. If you're familiar with some of the drying techniques, um, for those who are probably working in laboratories or 
for those who are processing already into processing or commercial processing of food products. Some of the ways which you can arrest, for example, browning of certain fruit products, you blanch them. One of the techniques is to blanch them. That is to inactivate enzymes, causing uh, the browning of certain food commodities. Prevention or delay of chemical reactions, for example, prevention of oxidation by using antioxidants. Citric acid or ascorbic acid has a role as an antioxidant. So you can sometimes see them in some parts of the ingredients of your food products because their role is to be antioxidants, meaning, meaning to say they delay oxidation of the product, which can cause spoilage. Or we prevent damage from insects or animals. It is suitable by using chemicals to kill insects or animals from destroying the foods or by storing foods in dry, airtight containers to prevent the insects or animals from destroying them. Okay. So through food packaging, for example, we can prevent access of insects to your food products. Or if we cannot prevent their entry, we might as well kill them using chemicals. But most of you might want, do not want chemicals in your food products. In some cases, imported fruits coming from other countries, they are sometimes coated with certain chemicals in order to prevent um, insects from coming into contact with your food produce. That's why you are always advised that if you are buying food commodities or especially fruit products, ex imported ones, you wash them before eating, not rub them in your pants and taking a bite, which is what we usually do. Apple. Okay, so these are the different methods. We either inhibit, inactivate, or avoid recontamination. So these are the different types of food preservation that we can do. Some of them are technologies. Some of them are physical structures, like food packaging, for example. Some of them are systems or programs which you might be very, very familiar of for most of you who are in the DOSE. So for inhibition, we have acidification, fermentation, control of pH, freezing, drying, which most of these fundamentals for inhibition we will discuss. In activation, some will discuss sterilization, pasteurization, irradiation, blanching, cooking you usually do at home, frying, extrusion, light, using light, sound, or magnetic field to inactivate microorganisms. How do we inactivate them? Usually we target their DNA structures. Or their, when we target their DNA or nucleus, for example, we prevent them from multiplying. Avoiding recontamination, so if you have already, have already done preservation or food processing, there's still a chance that your food might spoil. For example, if you're Fresh mangoes, we want to delay spoilage or we want to increase the shelf life of fresh mangoes, we produce mango jams, for example. But your mango jams, upon production, is already also prone to spoilage, tama? Na convert mo na siya, para hindi siya ma-spoil, but after conversion, it, ha it, can, uh, it has also a capacity to spoil. Na in the environment, remember, microorganisms can still, strive, can still thrive. So what we're going to do, we need to make sure that the environment is not prone to recontamination. We do not want, we want to prolong the, the, we want to prolong the life of the jam as well. So we avoid recontamination. How do we do that? Packaging. Hygienic processing, aseptic processing. We now take a look into programs that we implement in our manufacturing area in order to prevent or delay spoilage of processed foods. So you have ASIP, GMP, ISO 9000, TQM, Risk Analysis Management. Those are different programs, different types of food programs. Food safety quality systems, okay? First on our list, fermentation. Very, you are very familiar with this because you are producing hambal uh, at sara at home, right? Or most of you are a fan of uh, Korean telenovelas and a fan of kimchi. So kimchi is a famous uh, Korean um, fermented product. If you are watching Korean telenovelas, 
there are certain telenovelas that um, give a glimpse on how kimchi is being made. Being made. Diba? May mga Korean telenovelas na ginapakita, ginapong paano, ginahimo ang kimchi. 